a little Shazammy electricity in the WB logo, and the WB logo gives its pieces power to the New Line logo. Eh? <laughs> yeah, Black Adam style logos. Love of the Demons are just part of the legend here. You see them, but do you? Makes the reveal later super fun. Sometimes my viewers get confused on who the baddies are. If you're a mom who leaves a boxing match when your son starts losing, you're the baddie. So just to be clear, this guard is the bad guy. Good thing that guy's all scrawny, otherwise I might think it's The Rock. Jokes aside, I really did just assume Dwayne was playing his own father, which isn't unheard of, so you tricked me. You tricked me a bit. Oh, so that's where Jay-Z got the idea. The world is a vampire. Hell yeah, smashing pumpkins, and even more specifically, Bullet with Butterfly Wings is always a win. Ten-year-old Lee had never felt like such a rebel singing about rats in cages. Today, conduct is occupied by international mercenaries. The Intergang. Sabak and Intergang coming up in the first six minutes? DC nerds see you. Dang, 50-50 the rail on the first try? Way to gleam the cube, kid. Don't judge the pictures after my girlfriend broke up with me. Hold the phone, Mo is in this? Mo would definitely charm his way through. Pollute our water, oppress our heritage, and make us wait in lines all day. It's funny that this is just a distraction, but not a single lie was told. Better get you a fortune on the black market. Is that really turning up? Solid bait and switch, making us think that Samir is the bad guy in the group. I got fooled until, well, you know. Source of great power, who gets to keep it? But now everyone who's seen the new Aladdin is realizing that's Jafar and everything is probably gonna go belly up in a sec. There's really nothing like belting it out when you're in the car. Plus, Player's Baby Come Back is a banger. Oh crap, that was brutal and unexpected. See what I was saying about Moe's charisma skills? He was such a hero, why'd they bury him down here? He's not wrong. Also a nice nod to Ishmael's true intentions and lineage. <laughs> Lauren Balf always elevating the scenes and never distracting from them. Say you go. Chief, say your turn. <laughs> See, this is why you never stand at the end of the line. Always the middle. Okay, that's brutal. Solid line. Of all the catchphrases they try to come up with later, that one is dope. Love the disrespect, like a bunch of children were throwing snowballs, so he caught the first one while the others just bounced off his legs. And look, this movie doesn't always execute everything perfectly, but they really nailed Black Adam's introduction. From his strength to speed to near invincibility, he's a force, even though he takes flight at first. <laughs> the vibe is both gruesome and also funny. He kept his whole arm. Resourcefulness! Ooh, I love that slight crinkle to the metal of the chopper where he grabs it. Man, is this an epic orchestral version of Painted Black? With all the insane action going on, it could almost slip by, but then... I see Ah, there we go. Again, this intro to Black Adam is everything I could ever want. It's Quicksilver's kitchen scene, but with way more death and malice. Oh, shit. I might have just left it in. And you know how we feel about dudes not looking back at explosions as they walk away. Good, we feel good. <laughs> Quick thinking. It kind of makes sense that he wouldn't know it would explode. He's like a little kid learning about the world. <laughs> the timing of that foot falling over is fantastic. God willing, we won't see him again. Oh, the sound design here. There's almost a splat sound to it. Oh, and good morning to you, too. Shove it up your ass, Carter. We'll never complain about more Viola Davis as Waller. And I like to think that Viola is just as annoyed as Waller to have to keep coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't let anything happen to it. It's vintage. Henry Winkler shows up for a 20-second cameo, only seven of which he's visible, and it's 100% worth it. Gene Cousineau can do no wrong. Well, the Doctor Fate genuinely looks like he doesn't want to touch the helmet, but he knows he should. Seeing it to the future really does sound like a curse. Was I staring again? Only half an hour or so, sir. Maybe next time, honk the horn. Of course, sir. See, and I would assume future viewing would be like sleepwalking, and you never wake a future viewer. We don't need passports. We're the Justice Society. If you're not a DC fan, you might be wondering why they decided to make an Asylum version of the Justice League for their own movie, but don't sleep on Battle of Los Angeles or Sharknado. Is this entirely made out of Nth Metal? Nth Metal, from one of the versions of Hawkman's home planet, Thanagar? Nice Easter egg for us nerds. Ha! Faceless soups. Can't imagine what that's about. What happened to the crown? Too much? I doubt I would have bought into the whole demons forged the one true crown, etc. thing either, but Kareem would have made a fascinating sabak. You know it's cursed with demons, right? <laughs> I love how the couch just slides in front of his legs. 
Wizards. Fair. Clint's skills would seem like sorcery. Actually, we still have a lot of enemies that need vanquishing. Then destroy them. Intergang have guns and fly bikes and Eternium rockets. We have my mom. First of all, never underestimate the power of moms. Second, Adriana actually is a hero in the comics, as is Amon, so death here isn't far off. I love that not only does he not use doors, he also refuses to walk downstairs. And honestly, I get it. What's the point of exercise if you can just say a word and become an absolute unit? I mean, sure, exercise has proven to help with mental health, but it's pretty clear that's not a priority for Teth Adam. The superhero industrial complex is worth a lot of money. That really is quite perfect. We all think that aliens or people with superpowers would completely change our world, but nah, bro. We just figure out a way to monetize it. How else can I put this? We live in a society? Am I blowing minds? I think I am. This is not a very good plan. Yeah, well, bad plan is better than no plan at all. That's probably true. A little disconcerting coming from the people who are supposed to save the world, but still probably true. Look, stick it to your oppressors all day long, but what did the delicious pot of dumplings ever do to you, Amon? What was I telling you about moms? <laughs> I love that the intergang guy tries again. I guess a bad plan is better than no plan. <laughs> The setup with the shots and the music, making it look like it's gonna be an old-fashioned shootout, showing the intergang guy's hand over his gun, and then Black Adam just goes god mode on them all. Tell them the men in black sent you. Well, well yes, but, but not to me. Say it to the bad guys. But before you zap them. Catchphrase, then kill. Yes. I actually appreciate that he decided to try out the whole catchphrase thing. He's like, unsure if he's gonna be a hero. Doors are a no, walking is a no, but even a 5,000-year-old demigod is like, I mean, I gotta look cool when I'm merkin' fools. Ha! What was that head nod? It's like when you tell your kid no more candy and they just look you in the eye and stuff their face. Not my beautiful, precious little children, but probably your kids. He looks awesome, but yeah, dude, you just saved the oppressors. Not a way to make new friends. I don't know their crimes, but whatever they are, these men should face due process. Pretty bold words coming from a guy who's buddy-buddy with Amanda Waller. Heh, <laughs> process. Dude, that's how you make friends. We're the Justice Society. Our mission is to protect global stability. We're here to restore peace to Kandan. Man, I'm a fan of justice and societies, but anytime someone says stuff like that, they immediately get five sus points. You have two choices. Kneel or die. Goodness, Fate's voice is dominating. Ooh, that was brutal, and I knew it was coming. Look at that suit. It's cool. Thanks. You too. These two are so pleasant with each other. Compliments. Cyclone's bright rainbowy powers? Saving the innocents with teleportation. It would suck to constantly worry that you'll have a super disturbing vision whenever you touch anything. When movies just jump into the action and there aren't origin stories or literal trading card style lists of powers and abilities on screen, you might find yourself wondering why Hawkman can survive things like this. But really it all gets cleared up seeing him throw a Dotson pickup and then realize that throwing it was just a distraction. I'm zeroing in on your location! <laughs> Kid Deadpool just got a laugh out of me. And sometimes with all the superpowers and magic and flying, the answer is big guy crush. You, you look like a tornado. Yes, less friendly ribbing, more friendly gassing up. Just the society? We have been living under military occupation for 27 years and never seen you before. Fly down here and save us? She's not wrong. Again, five to ten sus points. I like that he comes here to look at the statue and you can assume he's being contemplative about his own role as a hero or maybe even just a little vain, but he's actually going to look at his son. Seriously, he does not struggle with one-liners. Better than free. It used to be great. I'm tired of all you jerks stealing my word. I own, great, 25 sus points to you. I'm not sure if this is a trash shoot, a laundry shoot, or just an escape shoot, but I want one, maybe all three. Adam Smasher is just such a nice dude. He's not Kid Deadpool, he's Sweetheart Deadpool. Love the little heat wave distortion left in Black Adam's wake. You want to be brave, huh? I want you to go to hell. That's the plan, little man. Spoilers. Tell them that the man of black. <laughs> you have to appreciate how hard he's trying to get the catchphrase in there. He's not affected by the spinning at all. I can help you, but no more extrajudicial killings. Most world governments don't care about that, so good luck getting Black Adam to care. Careful, dude. I almost hit you. <laughs> when slapstick works, it works. He threw a guy and then sped up the guy's bike to hit the guy, causing a sick explosion. <laughs> Tight. Ah, the old Silence of the Lambs trick. Always love it. 
suppose they didn't have doors in your day. I literally wrote that joke down earlier and then Pierce had to step all over it. And I have more evidence to make the joke because Pierce didn't see these ones. But seriously, balls aren't cheap. Stop doing that. Although the last one is actually epic in the distance. Tell me what you did with Armand. Where is he? I don't know. Hey, we've established you go after kids, you die. He is not a mine in the desert. I can show him. Also, you go after kids and you're a snitch, you definitely die. You said you wouldn't hurt the prisoners. That was sarcasm. You know, technically, it was just a lie. Honestly, it's a fine line sometimes, but good on Adam for owning up to it. If I didn't know better, I'd think Adam and Hawkman. Wait, wasn't that Michael Scott's fake superhero name he came up with when Andy was trying to get him to hate Dwight? Hawkman. Yes, yes it is. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh right, they don't seem to like the Justice League members. He must have had a really strong neck. No, it snapped when I killed him. Honestly, I like a hero with zero chill. You gotta hold on to what you love. Stop. <laughs> Hawkman. Somebody's gonna die. Who is it? Adam Smasher? It's Adam Smasher. Oh, that would have been my guess too. When it's time for you and I to say goodbye, you know. Well, that's cryptic, but also a smart way of helping Hawkman not change the future. These hero types are more likely to change something to avoid someone else dying rather than themselves. This is where you come. Are you ready? Damn it. It's <laughs> just impossible to control. He's like an invincible two year old. Not your son, not your country. <laughs> Not a good decision to make. Fair, a little judgy coming from the guy adding new doors to every building, but still fair. They say when Hurut died, you wept like a baby. I wonder if you'll do the same for them. Now that we know Ishmael had to die to become Sabak, it makes sense that he'd taunt Black Adam like this. Because, yeah, I'd probably kill this dude after saying that too. There's something very satisfying about the way Adam just moves through things like the railing because going around them would be like us going around toilet paper in our way. And saving your new little John Connor buddy. And an all-around cellar sequence. All the intergang guys get fried, Hawkman covers Adriana, Fate covers Amon, and Smasher covers his crush, Cyclone. Oh, and Black Adam pretty much turns everything to dust. It is he shot? It wasn't a bullet. It was me. He may be kind of a jerk, but he's honest. Honesty. I love that the rock shrunken form is still an Adonis. So it's actually Benjamin Patterson's workout routine. Skinny Death Adam. Obviously, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's workout routine as well. To be fair, though, I follow his Insta for the sushi cheat days. So a fun fact is that Teth Adam means Mighty Adam, and once he goes all dark and starts killing willy-nilly, the Shazam wizards start calling him Chem Adam, which, you guessed it, means Black Adam. Waller sent her regards. Yeah, underwater ice prison guard probably isn't a promotion for Harcourt. This feels like Waller punishing her after Peacemaker. Oof, knowing Waller, that's kind of bleak. There's definitely people in those cells who shouldn't be. That is awesome. I, I want that. Who's got the connect on the convertible jet submarine? Anyone? My audience? You earned this. Did... Did he make that? That looks like Sharpie. Is Adam Smasher the sweetest superhero to ever live? I have no fear of death. See what I mean? It's the best way for fate to play it. These heroes love an honorable death. The underworld is a mirror to our own. Man, it always comes back to the upside down. Speak our name. Sabak. So here's some fun facts, like I mentioned in my Shazam video, when he says Shazam, he's calling on the power of these Greek gods. When Black Adam says it, he's calling on the power of these Egyptian gods. Exactly. So you might already know all of that, but did you know that Sabak also stands for something? When he says Sabak, he's calling on the powers of Satan, Aim, Belial, Beelzebub, Osmodius, and Credius. Neat, and not even a little scary. Wow, they really went for it with a comic accurate beefed up Sabak, with a chess pentagram and everything. Marvel might have borrowed all of DC's ideas, but the MCU has beaten the DCEU to just about everything except Mephisto. So kudos to the DCEU for getting it out first and going full on demon batty here. Unleash hell on Earth. But also remember last week during Wakanda Forever when I was like, most people don't see themselves as the bad guys? Yeah, you gotta do some mental gymnastics to ignore the boiling ocean and horns. Oh, chest fire. Fair. <laughs> Appropriate reaction. Considering Sabak gets ripped in half like this by Black Adam, it's fun to imagine what Black Adam could have done to the jet when they first showed up. Not prepared to die. All right, Sabak gives Fate a run for his money in voice terror. What? He just nods and it shows up? That was awesome. Also, that spinning mace is gross when you think about the implications. Because of the implication. Wow, spoke too soon on how cool that weapon is. That's some teamwork. Stabbed in the chest and he still just uppercuts Hawkman like a punch out star punch. That plan is better than no plan at all. I do admire his resolve. Like, he's Hawkman. He's not invincible. He dresses like a hawk. But he's still going hairy on these Hendersons. Respect. For the first time in 100 years, I see nothing. Okay. And it's beautiful. 
For a character we met about an hour ago, this is a poignant and emotional moment, and it's entirely due to Pierce Brosnan being an absolute pro. Self-sacrifice. I was gonna say that this would have been scary for me as a kid, but now that I think about it, Tim Curry from Legend still haunts my dreams and I'm 30-something, so I'll just say he looks scary, full stop. Like Tim Curry from It, or actually Tim Curry from Fern Gully. My powers cannot defeat you. Honesty. He did the meme, he called Adam a boomer. Slow-mo action shots with epic orchestral music in the background. You know your boy loves it. But fate does not make mistakes. Also, that's a pretty dope line, cause like he could be talking about himself, but you get it. Also, also loves skinny Black Adam showing that he's still got fight in him even without Shazam powers. Nuh-uh, you do not disrespect the one true Bond like that. You deserve what's coming to you. <laughs> what? Okay. How do I dive in? Just stay away from electricity. I'm electrician. Don't worry. I die by electricity. I love that the information that might debilitate some, present company included, has given Kareem the confidence to be the badass that his undeniable outfit deserves. Badass good guy. I take Kantakis, my art now. Harut is still the hero. I got this. More teamwork. I do love when all-powerful beings that shoot lightning and fire and have magic powers decide to resort to good old-fashioned punchy punchy butt kicking. Beat his ass. Nah, Z Hawkman gets it. Even more teamwork. Hawkman stabs the box. The box stabs Hawkman. This is a real roller coaster of emotions. I learned this trick from an old friend. He's alive. My emotions. My emotions. Get it, Amon. Tell him the man in black sent you. He did it. He actually pulled it off. <laughs> What the? Did he just literally split Sabak in half? I mean, it's awesome, but what is this rated? Can I show that? I guess it doesn't have guts. It's just lava or something. Probably okay. Also, this makes me think there should be a new addition to the no capes rule. No horns! So my theory is that Fate always knew he was going to die. He couldn't see past this moment, but could see past his death slightly while the helmet was still in one piece. He always knew Hawkman would get fake stabbed, and he played it off the way he did so that Hawkman wouldn't stop him from sacrificing himself. It's his darkness that lets him do what heroes like you Cannot. I honestly love that Adriana is just all in on Adam being a killing machine. It totally makes sense based on, oh my gosh, she's Carmen from the L word. How did it take me this long to realize that? Always kind of wanted her and Shane to work out. Anyway, yeah, it totally makes sense based on what Adriana's been through. Thought we made a pretty good team back there. We made a great team. Maybe we can- Don't push it. Aw, sweetheart Deadpool smasher trying to make friends. Love the nod to the classic image. How does it feel? Wrong. But there we go, badass good guy. Thank you, Ted Adam. Perhaps that name is a little old-fashioned. So what should we call you? Teth Frank! Oh, got, gotcha. The Teth part wasn't what he wanted to change. I guess that's cool, too. We should talk. Seriously, you two could rule the world so easily. I guess you'll want to do good guy stuff, too. Oh, the things that could have been. Still love seeing Cavill Soups. So, what's the deal? Is Black Adam a villain? An anti-hero? Just a regular old hero? Well, I'd like to say it's complicated, but for this movie, it really isn't. Just because he fights the Justice Society doesn't make him a villain, so that's out. Okay, well, he kills his opponents, so he's an anti-hero? But also... meh. The dude is liberating an oppressed country. Sure, maybe he's having a little more fun murdering than you want your heroes to have, but that's the only reason I'm not supposed to cheer for Black Adam? He's essentially Superman, but like, all the bad guys are Zod. I realize that saying my issue with a film is that I like the main character too much is a weird one, it's just a case of everyone saying, isn't he so bad and dark, and me thinking, eh, not really. But this has been a passion of the rocks for a while, so it doesn't surprise me he wanted to come out looking clean. And even if Dwayne is the only person in Condock with a The Rock accent, he'll never not impress me. You killed him, didn't you? He didn't make it. That's part of his problem. He's too likable in general. But his comedic timing is excellent, and as the movie progresses, I really start to sympathize with his story. And seeing Black Adam on the big screen in live action is a fun nerd out moment either way. Same for Hawkman and Dr. Fate. Aldous Hodge and Pierce Brosnan do a fantastic job of bringing both gravitas and real fun to characters that I'd assume would be hard to pull off. I mean, I've always had a soft spot for Hawkman, but like, you know, Hawk? Man! And yet somehow he's a total badass. And the same goes for Sabak. I didn't know what direction they would go with him, and I wasn't disappointed. Live action Sabak is pretty dope, even if I'm a little curious what they could do with some practical effects. I think it'd be hard to convey his immense presence in the same way. While James Gunn's revamp of the DCEU hasn't officially nixed the possibility of more of Johnson's Black Adam, nothing is on the books yet. 
think that's the biggest bummer of the whole thing, because while this movie wasn't perfect, I still really enjoyed it. I want to see Black Adam interact with the shazam -ly. I want to see what random weirdo DC characters Gunn would throw at Black Adam. I want the JSA Black Rain storyline. I want to see what Amanda Waller does when Black Adam actually leaves Kondok. Hell, that mid credit scene made me want to hear Superman try to justify, like, anything Waller does, don't you? The DCEU has had a rocky 10 years, and while Black Adam actually did better than Shazam at the box office, it also cost twice as much. So it does feel like the final nail in the coffin. As a fan, I really don't need perfect films, I need enjoyable ones. And this one, while definitely not perfect, was definitely enjoyable. Next week, a newer one that has absolutely no parent-child stuff. Promise! We definitely need a catchphrase. Something blackout badass to say right before you absolutely cook some dude. I was so happy. Scorching!